So here's a fun little project for today. I bought this desktop CNC mill a couple of years ago and I have never even unboxed it or tried to assemble it. But it's raining today, so I'm kind of stuck indoors. So let's see if we can do something with this. So let's have a look. I think it was like 2018 when I bought this. I can't even remember where I got it from. I think it might have been Banggood or maybe Gearbest. Or might have even been eBay, I don't know. I'm not going to show you the other side of that because it's got my address on it. So, I'll just unpack these pieces. They're all in foam trays, which is quite convenient. Okay, so, we've got three foam trays. There's, there's the bed. There are various bits and pieces of structure. Here are the motors and the electronics. And hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, there's something on here that's going to tell me how to assemble this. This CNC machine I bought after I sent another one back. I bought one initially and it arrived with no instructions and all they did was send me a link to a YouTube video where somebody made something a bit similar and told me to do my best at assembling it. So I sent that one back and then I bought this and then I did nothing with it. So hopefully if I can find a machine that's got a CD drive in it, these little mini CDs will tell me what I've got to do. I presume one's got the software on and one's got the instructions. Let's hope. Okay, back in a moment. Okay, so fun times. These discs actually don't appear to have anything on them at all. Now, that might just be because they've degraded. This has been sat in storage for 18 months. So it might be that they did have something on them originally and they don't now. It does look like there are data tracks on there, but when I put these in, it wanted to treat them as blank disks. So we're on our own as far as that's concerned. Whatever was on there is now gone. I did find a listing for what I think is the same machine. So this has got some pictures of the machine, and I reckon probably from here we can figure out how it all goes together. So let's get this all unpacked, and then we'll get started on attempting to assemble. So the machine is a kind of hybrid of plastic and metal parts. It's got these thick, I guess these are what, these are, they look like fiberglass or something. So they're some sort of composite plastic material. and the old familiar make a slide type rails. You can actually see that the, there's bits of metal shavings stuck to the inside of the glue there, to the inside of this sticky sheet. So I'm gonna give this a wipe down and just run the desk over with a portable vacuum before I try and assemble this because there's little bits of swarf stuck in the plastic parts there so more than likely yeah I can see that we spread a few of these on the desk so I'll just make sure that we are clear of all of those before we start assembling the electronic bits. All right. And then in this box, we've got stepper motors, the Z axis, the spindle motor, what appears to be the bag of bolts and tools, interface board, and then this is the stepper motor driver board by the look of it. So, yeah, loads of cables, a pair of safety specs oddly, but I think this model's also sold with laser sometimes. Additionally, a bunch of cable ties, some little router bits, and some heavy duty bolts. I wonder what those are for. It's four of them. I wonder if it's just for holding the frame together. I guess we'll figure that out. Okay, right. 
I'm going to go over this with a vacuum cleaner because those little bits of swarf are lethal to electronics. And then we'll get started. Again, I found another listing for more or less the same machine, but I think this is actually the one I've got. And it's got an exploded diagram, which will be much more useful to me. Obviously, it doesn't tell you the order in which you put things together, but good enough. figured this out. Now if we go to control, I've got spindle, x, y, okay so I've got some fine adjustments. There are no limit switches, so you're kind of on your own when it comes to how far you move things. If you move them to the limit, you just end up jamming and the motor drops steps. Anyway, well, I think we've managed to get it together okay, and it feels pretty solid. There's really very little play in any of these parts so in theory it should be able to do the job so the next thing to do is to try to get it hooked up to the computer and see if we can actually get it controlled by a piece of software that can do kind of uh, g-code stuff okay so for controlling this thing I've decided to start using easel from inventables easel is the CNC all-in-one solution that comes with XCarve, except you can also use Easel to control other kinds of off-brand CNC machines, including this one. So, just as a test now, I can actually, so I can jog this machine just with the controls in Easel. So, that thing can talk to it, which is great. So I guess the question is, why Easel rather than something that's a bit more grown up. Well, fact is, easel is just simple, and I like simplicity. So we can design things here, and we can actually have it cut them direct from here as well. So on the first cut, on the first run of using this, there's lots of potential for screw up. So I'm gonna use a sacrificial piece of MDF. That will fix down to this bed here with these little nuts and bolts. And I'm going to cut some of this foam board. This is like a, 
rigid foam, quite easy to cut, probably not very likely to jam the tools. So that will be my first material to cut. I'll fix it to the sacrificial MDF with probably double-sided tape. We'll stick that down and we'll use that as our first cutting exercise because I don't really want to mess up in a way that might damage the machine or break a cutting bit or something like that. Okay, so this is the initial setup. This is my dust containment solution, very, very makeshift, but I just wanted to see if this thing works properly. I'm using it with easel online rather than using offline G-code. Again, just because I want to see if it works. Once we've done a few tests, I'll think about building an enclosure for it. I'll think about how I'm going to actually use it offline with the little SD card in the tethered controller. Okay, so I think we're ready to go. We're going to carve something really nice and simple. So let's go. Okay, well that went reasonably well, with one small problem. I actually managed to stop the process halfway through and then it dragged the piece, it dragged the bit through the piece here. And that's because my laptop was running out of juice and I went to plug it in. I think that little blip in the power stopped the machine and the job thought it had finished. But no matter, we still completed the job. I managed to get it lined up again and then recut just the outer piece here. So. Let's see if we can get this off the double-sided tape. It's going to be trickier than I thought. Maybe I used a bit too much tape. Okay, and it's cut fairly cleanly. Now, I don't have quite the right bits for this kind of machining. I really should have an end mill for this, and all I've got is those little pointed engraving bits. But this should give us an idea of what's possible. It's just, I need to cut those tabs. It's put some tabs here because I told it to. Okay, well, like I say, it seems to work okay. It needs a little bit of cleaning up. Although, some of that is just dust adhering to the piece. I used far too much tape on here. So, okay, what use is this machine to me? Well, if you followed this channel for any amount of time, you may know that one of the problems I really have with my engineering is repeatability and precision. I'm not that good a craftsman, to be honest, and cutting small parts with precision and cutting multiples of the same part is something I've always had trouble with. And so I think that this is probably something that's going to help with that. And so I may be able to attempt more intricate little projects once I get to grips with this machine. see it's taken me only a day or so to get to the point where I've made the world's worst spirograph well anyway there we go so yeah we're gonna do some more projects using this CNC I've ordered some more bits so that I can cut the right kind of cuts this has got a slightly beveled edge because it was cut with that V bit and in fact all of the bits they've given me in this box are the same they are engraving bits and they're great, they're really sharp, but I need a bit more variety. So I've sent off for some end mills and some round nosed mills and we'll better do a di bunch of different things, including perhaps some 2.5D engraving and maybe a few other things. So there we go, that was my cheapo Chinese 3018 CNC mill. 
just really the start. If you've got any ideas for projects I should tackle with this, please let me know down in the comments. In the video description, I will put some hopefully helpful notes about the sequence of assembling. So if you've bought one of these things and you haven't got any assembly instructions, hopefully that will help you with the sequence. Most of the parts I found were fairly self-explanatory where they had to go, but the sequence of assembly was the important thing. And I did find a couple of times I had to take things apart so that I could add another piece in. Anyway, thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.